JD again, and it's time to assemble the pocket watch. So I made a mistake in the first video. It is an Illinois pocket watch. You got people binging me on the text. Bing! Anyway, it's an Illinois pocket watch. It's very old. It's vintage. Um, I polished the case. As you can see, I did some polishing on the case. This case looks really nice now. I got fingerprints on the back. So polished, I can easily fingerprint the back now. So I have to muddy that up some more. So there we go. So I polished the case, took all the scratches out of it. So it's uh, it's nice. I got a little few polish lines I might get rid of. I need to buff it still, I think, and uh, get rid of those polish lines. I just saw them on camera. That's unacceptable. Unacceptable. Can only do work to perfection. But I got all the sides polished and everything else. The uh, the lens looked really good. I got some leftover polish on here. But anyway, I did the job and polished the uh, case, which is nice. So it's going to be all ready when this thing is running, hopefully really well. So I've got the um, the watch cleaning machine that I've shown you before, the Pearl. So I've just taken the uh, parts out of the Pearl machine. Now I'm going to just see what they look like. It's dried out because it has a drying cycle in the machine that I, that I run. And then at the very end, I figured out how to make this thing non-hot because I stick it in the heater, stick it down into the heater, then I pull it up and and I just, I just run it in the air for a little while and then it just cools it down a bit and um, then I can take it off or detach it and away we go. So let's take the parts away. Alrighty then. So here's the container. Here's the container. There's people uh, texting me. That's what you're hearing the bing for. I'm expecting a watch in the mail um, but I sent it, I got it sent to the wrong address so it was actually my mistake. And I sent it to a different number, one number off from my address, which was kind of stupid. But, but stuff like that happens. So I need to empty the uh, the dish here. So this is the, uh, the center wheel here that, that I took out. So that's the center wheel. And it's got that uh, safety pinion in it. I think that was the first version of a safety pinion, by the way. With a little hook in it. It's kind of neat. But it prevented uh, the mainspring from snapping. So these are the two screws I was concerned with losing. So I'll just put those on the side. And these screws are not part of the plate. Those are the, the uh, mainspring plate. And there's that case screw that was pissing me off earlier. So it's going to be more like Bun Special there. I like, I like Mr. Bun Special. He's kind of a cool guy. And he uh, he's, his crankiness makes me laugh because I think he's funny as heck. So, so someday I'd like to meet him. Find out what the bun guy's up to. So that's number one. There's number two. I think I can lift this out from the bottom a bit first and just shift it up and then grab it. And I got a few things in here that I've put in here. So I've got the mainspring barrel and the cap for the mainspring barrel. That's the cap. Cap. I've got the uh, plate for the mainspring barrel. It's nice, nice to see this thing not dirty anymore. Then I've got two screws, and these these are for the plate. So I am putting, taking these screws. You can see me on the other camera. It's kind of neat because you can see a sideways view. How you doing? How you doing? Anyway, so that's that's that. Now I've got these three baskets to empty. I didn't have much in these baskets. Like I have a wheel in this one. So I can just dump that wheel. And put the uh, cap back in the basket, so you get a play-by-play. -play. How many other watchmakers out there do this and give you a play-by-play? -play? None. So there's some people out there that tell me they're learning stuff from me. I'm like, you haven't spoken to my wife, have you? She said she's never learned a thing from me. I think she's faking it. In more ways than one. Ha <laughs> ha, funny guy. Uh, anyway, I get back to my joke that I told you I'd tell you earlier. So the guy says, he goes, boy to geez, he's from Newfoundland, Canada. He says, boy, did geez, I'm going to the Spain thing there, and I don't know how to speak the Spanish. So his buddy says, look, he says, you don't have to worry. All you do have to do is speak really slow. He goes, you sure that's going to work? He goes, oh, yeah, it'll work. Don't worry about it. So he goes to Spain. He goes into a bar in Spain. He goes up to the bartender and says, can I have a beer, please? That's the minute wheel right there, or the seconds wheel right there. So nice and clean. The bartender says, sure. And the bartender goes and grabs a beer. And he says, 
here's your beer. Here's the mainspring, nice and clean. And the and the newfie says, "Thank you." And the bartender says, "Are you from Newfoundland?" And the newfie says, "Yes." Are you from Newfoundland too? Nice clean plates, folks. Nice. I'm gonna look at the jewels too after. And he goes, "Yes." And then the newfie says to him, "Then why are we both speaking Spanish?" There you go. That's a that's a funny friggin' joke. So there, that's, this is all clean and ungreased. If you recall, in this plate, we had a big puddle of grease right in there, right? That was a huge puddle of grease, and I left it in there just to show how nice this watch cleaner cleans. So this is did a great job. So now it's a spick and span, spick and span. Now I just put the the um, the baskets back in place and ready for the next cleaning job. So their baskets back in place. I throw them in this box, American for box, this box, and I put them on my shelf, my shelf, my shelf. I don't have an American for shelf. So there's the pearl watch cleaning machine complete basket. And these baskets are also good for the, I think it's the Eterna machine or something, but it's an American made watch cleaning machine. That's a uh, way more expensive, and this uh, and that's good for that too. So, so this is good. Um, and now I'll just start reassembling this beast. Here's what it looks like sitting on the bench. Yeah, I'm looking at these jewel holes up close, and man, are they clean! So this uh, watch cleaning machine does an excellent job. Look how clean those holes are, folks. Those are exceptionally clean. Now I'm doing a little bit of work on this uh, cap here, so I'm going to take this off. I see my, you can see my chin there, man. You can probably see the side of my bald head too, so. Take this off here, like that, and then um, if I can just shim this up, I'll, and that's going to be great. If I can't, I will, I will uh, punch it from the other side. And there's some witness marks right here and right here, so. This is going to be my witness mark right here, I think. So, so I uh, can put this cap back. And look at that. So I just lifted that right up, and I can turn that around. And then, with a piece of pegwood, it's the same wood that Al Bundy used on his wife. Peg. I'm not sure how many people out there got that joke, but if you didn't get the joke. Then you're gonna have to go watch Married with Children. So it's funny. It's a show that my parents loved to watch, and they were a little bit older, but they just loved Married with Children. It was a amazing. I didn't think they would, but they did. So there you go. I put my hat on backwards so my head doesn't get cold. So I find that just taking a, a piece of pegwood and just scraping the uh, jewel, the cap jewel off does a great job of cleaning it. And I'm just scraping the complete capsule as well in case there's any residual stuff in there. And I think I told you last time that what I do is I look at it at an angle to see if there's anything at all left over, um, any dirt at all left over on that capsule. Uh, and I also use my world's best friend Rodico. So you stretch the Rodico out and then you bend it. And then you can uh, twist that like this. Should get this uh, movement holder out of the way, right? And then you can just tap that cap, tap the cap. I just hold it in place with my tweezers. And that allows me to just get any dirt that's just sitting there that's been there for a while. Now I'm looking at the cap jewel at an angle. And I think I'll rub that a bit more, but I'm going to hold it with the uh, tweezers on the wide side. And just rub that capsule just a bit more and have a look at it. And it's looking pretty good. I remember the pivot for the, uh, the balance staff will, will rest on that capsule. So if the end shake is perfect, it'll just touch it. Um, I think that's good enough, folks. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's good. And then I should be able to rub out the inside of this jewel setting as well. And if I can, well, I got to get Erotico in there. I think I may have to take this jewel setting out and just throw that into alcohol. Get the cap jewel out of the way and the screws so I don't lose them. And then clean out that jewel setting. I imagine the cleaner also did a job in that jewel setting. So I'm going to have a little a close look at that set. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. It's mint, baby. M I N T. Get that from the other side as well. A little Rodico from the other side as well. I don't want to screw up the end, sh or the end shake on this either. You got to make sure the jewel setting is level. It's level as heck, right? It looks pretty good there. I'm gonna look at the under. I'm gonna look at it under the microscope, and what I'll do is I'll leave my cameras running here, and you'll be able to see the microscope in action. So I don't think I've done that before. Um, also, take a knife like this, and then sharpen the end of the uh, sharpen the end of the pegwood, and I'll see if. Sometimes the jewel settings for the, uh, the balance jewels are way too small to peg out the hole. Uh, it just doesn't work. It's way too small. You end up getting the, the pegwood stuck in the uh, wrong side of the hole. I'm going to try it out anyway, though. Let's see if that did anything. I think it did. Anyway, I'm going to look in the microscope now. <clears throat> tear the top off of this thing and spin it over and have a look in the microscope at this jewel setting. Make sure that I've got uh, that I've got all of the crap out of the jewel setting. <clears throat> Clearing my voice. I'm leaving it. I'm leaving the cameras the way they are for now, and I'm just going to zoom in on this setting here to make sure there aren't any residual issues here. I think there's just a little bit of stuff on the bottom that I need to use my Rodico to get rid of. Yeah, other than that, it's pretty clean. Um, let me just get in here with my Rodico, and I should be able to tap that, maybe and see whether see what comes out i think some of the stuff i'm seeing is the uh, wood from the from the pegwood which is a uh, residual it's not bad there but there's one little piece i want to get out so i'm gonna have to focus the uh microscope here a bit up up a bit further yeah I can see that right there it's like why are you just sticking out like that as well while I'm in here um, I have this nice little piece of pegwood and I'm going to just peg this out just a bit and under the microscope, which is like incredibly close, incredibly detailed, and I, I'll be able to just clean off the surface here nicely. And that, my friends, is working really well. You can see how small this is when I get the microscope in there. I'll just turn up the, uh, the light a bit. Um, that jewel is in brilliant condition. So that stuff that I saw was actually from the pegwood. 
So it's, uh, I just dip the pegwood into uh, my Rodico to see if it's got any, was holding any additional stuff there. Yeah, that's pegwood stuff. I'm telling you, it's hard to find good help. But that's good there. That'll rotate nicely in the, uh, I'm looking at the settings as well, and they're beautiful. Beautiful, I tell you. I'm going to dip the settings as well in Rodico, just to get any additional dust off them. So I don't, I don't think it will matter. It's pretty good there. some stuff off of the settings but the uh, cleaning machine did a great job the settings are 50 times cleaner than they were before yeah just want to get that last little bit of dust out of this thing last little bit of dust I know this is as exciting as watching friggin something dry, right? Alright, that's good enough. Now I'm going to oil this thing and put it back together again. Move that microscope out of the way. And I'm telling you, the, microscopes, the microscope is invaluable. So. If you're going to do detailed watch repair work, you want to have a microscope because um, without it, you're you're going in blind, Jerry. You're going in blind. Let's see, get my oil here. I need my good oil. My good oil. So there's my oiler, and I want the thin oil for this particular one, the 9010, I think it is, and I can clean off my oiler here and I'm going to put the oil on the cap if I can get away with doing that but I'm going to before I do that I want to see how this cap is going to be aligned so I can just put it right back where it was so I can see a witness mark there on the side and I can see a witness mark I think on the other side look at that yeah, I think the witness mark is on the other side. Just trying to see if which way things are going here. Well, you know what? I, I had it right the first time. I've got the witness mark is on the other other side. Let's see if I can turn the light on this on the camera here, which might work a bit better. I'm just looking to see how this goes in. So I get, that's like that, and that's not how it goes. But I can now see the big line there. Yeah, that doesn't line up with that mark, I don't think. That would line up with the other mark. So I move that around the other way. Like this. And then this lines up with that. Yeah, that's how it goes. And if I turn around this way, when I oil it, I'm telling you this thing is barely able to grab it with the tweezers. So when I oil that I can just flip it around now and it'll be ready to go. So move it a little bit closer, see if I can do that. And then I'm gonna oil this and away we go. Please don't fall asleep. What you don't want to do is over oil it. So that's not a bad little level of oil I've put on that. And you close your oilers down and get them out of the way. Again, everything needs to get out of the way. And I'm going to see if I can turn this around without screwing up here. Shut up. Somebody's texting me or something, right? I'm not sure what's happening on my phone. 
once I got it in the hole like this, I just need to nudge it over. Flatten this out. And I need to get the other side in first, maybe. Trying to stay away from the jewel, the jewel, so you don't crack the jewel at all. Sitting nicely now. Let's see if I can push that in a bit. There we go. So that just slid right into place now. So it's important that it's all arranged or organized properly so it slides into place. I stabbed my mat a few times because I'm kind of up close and I'm trying to get the good video as well for you folks out there. So hopefully you're appreciating all the work. And I'm doing one screw at a time here. Yeah, tighten it up, but I don't tighten it up beyond snug. Because if you tighten it up beyond snug, the next guy's going to be pissed off at you. Because he's going to have a hell of a time trying to get that screw out. So I just tighten it up well enough that it won't come out again. But it's not a uh, too too tight such that it's uh, impossible to remove. There we go, done. So now I've got this this end. It's nicely nicely in there, and it's oiled. And I can probably rest this on my uh, on my movement holder. Uh, don't want to do that. I want to do this. So I can put that on my movement holder. Look at what I got here. Try putting the right end of it on the movement holder. You dummy. So there we go. So I'm going to stop and start the film again in case I get a corrupt film problem. Which happens sometimes. You can see me with my mouse now on the top there. Yeah, this is not good. Okay, so the order I've got to put these parts back in are as follows. So I need to put the um, this in first. I'm going to shut this off because it's bugging the crap out of me. There. I'm going to put this, the ratchet in first, but I think I want to put just a dab of oil on the top of that, so, and I want, I don't want the oil to be too thick, so I'm going to use this oil here, which is my, this oil is my friend. I'm going to put a couple lines of oil here, because this will be spinning around and ratcheting. I've seen these old watches with tons of oil on them before, and uh, probably doesn't do them any good, but they, get, they go back and get them serviced, so so the oil, I imagine, is cleaned up during the service. So, so, so this ratchet, as you can see, this thing came out super clean, look at that. So that's the cleaning machine that did that, because it was one big mess before. So, so I'm going to put that in, and then i got to push it over. I might get my, my glove back on. I'm going to do another Bugs Bunny here. <sighs> and put my glove on. That way I'm not, not leaving any fingerprints in here. Unnecessary fingerprints. I haven't found a finger cut, by the way, that's comfortable yet. So, so if someone else has, then let me know. Because uh, I haven't. Because it's a pain in the butt to, to do this. So. A little oil where the ratchet wheel is, the gear. I think I need to put more oil in my oily thing here. So that will help. That'll just transfer a little bit of that oil around. That 
should be good enough. Just like that. And I can put the mainspring in last. So I'm looking at my photo here. And there's the picture of the photo. And so it looks like I have to put in Mr. Center Wheel first here. So I think this is the guy that had the uh, that blew its gasket. No, no, that's not the center wheel. That's the, set, that's the intermediate wheel. So this is the center wheel here. So this has got the safety pinion in it. So I think, I'm not sure if I need to do anything with this other than just put it in. I think if I just put it in like this, it should be fine. So just turn that safety pinion and put it in like this. And I think that should be fine, just like that. So that goes in there. And then the next wheel would be the intermediate wheel. And that would go upside down like this and right in here. The hardest part of putting these watches back together is because they're a full plate, is actually putting the full plate in. Man, is it a pain. So the intermediate wheel should have gone in before the other two wheels. So I'll just take this out now. Put that aside. And I'm going to put the escapement in. The escapement looks like it goes in pinion down. Is that right? Hopefully it is. Is it pinion down? Hard to say. That goes in pinion down. That's that doesn't make any sense. No. It all has to work. So at the end of the day, and if it begins this way, it won't fit, right? So, so it must go in pinion down, but it has to go in after this one goes in. So this wheel is the seconds wheel, which goes in next, like that. And then the intermediate wheel goes in next, likely like this. Once I turn them all, I can tell right away whether they're working or not. So that seems correct, but man, that's tight. I'm going to look at this closer here to make sure I'm not screwing up. Yeah, there's nothing driving this if it goes in this way, is there? What the heck am I doing? I'm looking at the photo though, and it looks, looks to be going in that way. Am I missing something here? Am I off one wheel or something? You know what I am? I'm backwards one wheel. So this wheel here goes the other way. It goes in with the uh, pinion down. that and now yeah so the main the main wheel the center wheel drives the pinion which drives this wheel which drives the other wheel see how all those wheels are turning that's how that works so that's that's in there nicely um, and then the escapement that put the escapement wheel in the right place Let's move everything out of the way here and Sometimes I wish my glasses, my loop is a bit too deep, too close, I think. So I believe this goes in like this. If I do this and then I got to get my loop in there, I can't see the damn thing. So. I think this is why some of these old dudes go into clock repair. Because your eyes go. So that's that. And so that's nicely in position. But then I've got to take out, I've got to clean the, um, the pallet fork first. So let me go away for a second here. All right, to clean the pallet fork, I'm just going to put this into this little tiny container. I've got a little faux leather on the bottom. It absorbs, it absorbs a bit of lighter fluid, but I'm actually going to use just a dab of lighter fluid. So the lighter fluid I use is just a Zippo lighter fluid and 
I just put a bit in the bottom there to cover the pallet fork and that will drown that pallet fork just a bit and that will not impact the shellac which is amazing so it doesn't hurt the shellac that's holding those jewels in but I don't trust it even though everything I've read and I've never had any problems with the shellac um, I still don't trust it so there's the uh, there's that and then I just take a brush here and I use my toothpick or, or my tweezers and get in really close here and just dab the uh, pallet fork away with the, uh, with the brush. See, I'm just dabbing it with the brush nice and lightly. And I got the, the uh, jewel sticking outward, which is nice. And that's pretty much all I need to do on this thing. And that'll, that'll clean that very quickly. Put the brush back, and then I need to take some watch paper here that I have. I'm going to double up on the watch paper because I don't want my mat to get all gooey. And then I'm going to grab that pallet fork, as it is, and I'm going to throw that on the watch paper. And that will absorb some of the liquid, some of the lighter fluid. Just put that over there for now. And just push that down here and get it to absorb the lighter fluid as it as I move it around. So I'm just moving into diff different positions like that and then once I've gotten the majority of the lighter fluid that's just sitting there um, off the pallet fork uh, I will commence to blowing on it with my puffer and holding it and not blowing towards my parts because I don't want my parts to make like a bird and fly away. So I gotta basically blow over to the side here like that and I just keep blowing on it here just to get and this lighter fluid will evaporate so quickly it's unbelievable so just blowing on that like this get that to evaporate and I'm not giving up yet Good there. Let's put that out of the way. And now, so I've got a pallet fork that's in good operating condition right now, and I'll be oiling that the pallet fork jewels later. So the first thing I want to do though is put that pallet fork in the plate and then rotico it down in a position. So so the pallet fork looks like that, right? And I've got to to install this um, in position. You basically have to reverse everything so if you've got your movement as you can see in the side there I'm covering it a bit but your movement goes over like this so the pallet fork would go in uh, this way likely and it would have to be the other way so it would have to be basically facing the other way so it would be facing this way to engage the escapement so if it's let me move this in here like that so the pallet fork would be like this. So if you try to put that pallet fork on and try to put the plate on, man, that's difficult as hell, right? So I figured out a way of doing this. So I just take this like this, right? This is a configuration that needs to go in. Push this out of the way like that. Reverse this like this, which means the pallet fork needs to go in like this, right? So I just find home with the pallet fork here while well, I'm trying to talk and do everything else. So let me just see if I can do this and not talk. And those stones there are clean as heck. So put that into position. Can't see a damn thing. You people out there better be appreciating the camera work because it is so hard to do watch work while you're working camera angles and stuff. I might have it here. Yeah, I got it now. So that's so that's in place there. And then what I want to do is 
Take a very small piece of Rotico. I'll show you what I do here. Move this out of the way. I want, I want this to evaporate too, so I don't want to put that near my computer or anything that uh, might blow up. So, <clears throat> so I want to get the piece of Rotico, a little tiny thin piece of Rotico. And I should be able to put that little piece of Rotico like a strip right over the top. So, so I'm going to just go take it off like that. And I'm going to put this piece of Rotico on top of the pallet fork. And I just want to keep this in place, that's all. I'm using my fingernail here to spread that rotico on the plate. And I want to push too hard on here because that'll that could damage the uh, that could damage the pivot on the bottom. So that's just like that. So this a gentleman called me on this, and so I'll just show you up close what it looks like. So that's that's the rotico there holding that in place, and it shouldn't interfere with this wheel with the escapement when I put that back. So so that's the trick right there to do that rotico. So so now, and I've already done as you recall the jewel on here, so we're ready to go. So now I'll take this here, make sure I'm not forgetting anything else in this wonderful game. I can put my uh, mainspring in later. So they designed this that way. So so now I can just reverse this like this. Right? And I've got the jewels on the correct side. The pallet fork jewels are on the correct side, which is great, right? You can see them there. And then when I reverse this and come down on it like this, I want to make sure that everything is perfectly lined up. So I'm going to just lower this nice and easy down on this uh, like this just like landing the uh, the Mars rover just like that so now I've got the plate is, d is down on top of everything so I'm gonna look at I'm gonna look at it from the side for a second to make sure there isn't any interference here with the uh, the gears and everything else and it doesn't seems to be okay I'm just gonna tap I'm gonna end, I'm gonna tap the uh, just tap that pallet fork so it's lined up or below the uh, in, just gonna tap it into the hole if I can so now what I'll do is I'm going to put in some of the screws really loosely and I'm doing that so I'm doing I'm trying to remember which screws are which screws I think these are the ones that go into the base movement so I'm doing that so that the movement that the the top the uh, the plate on top stays in place so I'm not going to screw it in tight though I'm just going to screw down screw this down a bit and I gotta get the camera out of the way or else I can't do this so I'm gonna screw this down just a bit and not put any pressure like so I'm backing this off so there's no pressure on the pivots at all so I just need to put two screws in I don't need any more than that because I'll tell you what I gotta do now because this is the full plate part which is nasty man nasty this is where not a lot of watchmakers will work on the full plate movements. So, so I back that off, back that off. So now this plate won't fly off on me. So now I have to take this little pick I have here and I got to hold that up and very to my eyes and very closely tap on these to get this whole thing to fall down in place. So I'm going to go away while I do that because this sometimes takes 20 minutes. Sometimes it takes five minutes. All right, so that looked like it was five minutes, not 20. Um, and it, it's usually so the center wheel needs to fall in first then the <coughs> then the third wheel and then like the intermediate wheel then the second hand wheel and the next one so I'm gonna screw this down but again not too tight because I want to make sure that uh, the wheels are moving properly right so they're screwed in like this and I just have to shake this a bit I'm gonna take the Rodico off of the uh, 
take the rotico pick the rotico off of the it's the uh, pallet fork you can see the rotico in there in the pallet fork so I'm going to just remove that rotico from the pallet fork and it should just come straight out without a problem so just make sure you get it all though and then just pick that up pick that out and there it is so the rotico is now out of that put it back where work with his parents so now when I move this wheel like that so what I'll do is put a little bit of toothpick pressure on that wheel and then I'll snap that the fork back and forth and see if that snaps so I'll show you what I'm doing here so this is a close-up man give me a close-up so I can't remember which way I'm gonna put the pressure on it but I'm gonna put some pressure on it and I'm gonna to try to snap that thing back and forth this way yeah that's good so that's snapping back and forth I just put a little bit of pressure on the center wheel like I'm the mainspring and just move this take your your favorite uh, tweezers or whatever you got probably use a toothpick is probably better so you don't damage anything but the tweezers aren't too bad they're brass so so just get a toothpick like that and then in there nice and tight and just touch put a little pressure on that center wheel there we go you see that snapping back and forth that is a good thing that means the uh, energy is going from that wheel to the other wheel and now what I do is I just look for pivots so Make sure all the pivots are where they're supposed to be. So you got to bring the watch up to your face really quickly and then look for pivots. So let me just do that here. Make sure I get pivots coming out of every jewel hole. Because if I don't, the problem will be worse. And then I'm going to check the end shake here. I'm going to look at each one of these and move it up and down. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Now that's just making sure then that that all the gears, all the wheels and the pivots are in place. So now I'm just put a little bit of pressure on the uh, on the plate here. Push that down so the plate's solid down now. So now I can take these screws here and tighten them a bit so I'm really being instructional today I apologize if I seem like I'm lecturing a bit but I just want to make sure this is done properly I'm still getting energy going through there without any blocking so I can tighten this up and tighten that one up so there so the basic movement the base movement is together now which is a good thing so I need to install the mainspring now, so I got to curl the mainspring back into the barrel. So I'm going to get my mainspring winder out, and I might show you how that's done too. So it's going to be tricky to set up. All right, here's what you do. So the first thing you do is open up the mainspring winder, then you want to put in, or a vise rather, then you want to put in your mainspring winder right right here on the end of the vise. So it's so you've got room here to tighten this up. So so there we go. It's in there nice and tight. Then I have a look at the direction of my mainspring. So that's counterclockwise. So it's going counterclockwise as opposed to clockwise into the barrel. Now I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the barrel for lubrication, just a bit. First of all, I'm going to put it here where the arbor is to get that, make sure that arbor is moving around nice and smoothly. I've seen these barrels just soaked in oil before, right? So that's that. And then I'm going to put a couple of lines of lube on the on the barrel itself on the inside, like this. Just lightly lubed, because the spring will just grab this stuff. You don't want too much oil because it'll cause all kinds of other problems. So I'm gonna snap my. Uh, I'm not. I'm set up in an awkward position again because of the camera. So 
So I got this thing over here and this thing over here, and I should really be set up properly. So I got to work carefully, but but I have to adhere to where the camera is and stuff like that, so you guys can see what's going on. So that's a little bit of oil in that mainspring, and the oil I use for that. Stand by while I grab the oil. I believe it is not microgliss. It is. It is. Just knock over a whole bunch of stuff here. It is, it is Mobius 21, HP 1300 or Mobius, that's what I use there, HP 1300 or Mobius 9104. And this stuff is not cheap. So as you can see, it comes in a little container here and the oil, the oil thing is inside of there. It's like nitroglycerin. So it's like 50 bucks for an ounce of oil. So it is not cheap. So it's just part of Watchmaking is a, it's a synthetic oil and it's very good. And the other oil I'm using for the finer parts here are it says lot expiration. I gotta get some new stuff, eh? 2021. No! So that's the other Mobius 9010. Uh, I don't know if I believe the expir expiration date on the synthetic oil. I think the other oil, and also for the barrel, if, I'm, if I've got a barrel I want to grease, I can use microgliss or D5 for, for the uh, setting mechanisms as well. So that's what I have in my oiler, in my uh, oilers right now. So I said counterclockwise. So that means the spring has to go in this way, into the barrel, counterclockwise. Which means I gotta find the right size, the right size barrel, mainspring barrel jobby doohickey. So you want it to fit in, but not like that. You want it to fit in relatively tight, but but uh, let me look at this one here. Um, so I want to make sure I've got enough stuff to grab this with. All right, so anyway, this one here, that fits actually very nicely. So there's no problem there. So I want to put that in. So what I do is I take my, my device here and it's got a little peg to grab the spring with. And I put that in place. And I make sure that that is I loosen this first, right? So let me just get my uh, my camera up here a bit so you can see what I'm going on. See my junk in the background there. Uh, junk. I think after you get certain, so many years, you get tons of junk you don't need. I need to get those big garbage bins out and see you later, junk. So there you go. So that's in like that. And I can tighten this up down here. So that's like this and I left that tab up high so you can see what's going on so then I put my my winder in here and I have my stop set so it stops right there so I don't end up winding it too far but I should actually have my stop set no it's good there I think yeah yeah it's good there so that's my stop there so then I need to wind the spring on so as I said it's counterclockwise so if you're going in, if you're going into the barrel counterclockwise, then you're going in like this, right? And then you're winding this thing clockwise, so like that. So just to make sure, always check with your photos again. And there's my photo like that. So that's like this going into the barrel, right? like that going into the barrel, which means it has to go like this, goes the other way into the spring winder. So so now I want to make sure that the little tab on the mainspring winder catches this and I'm winding it clockwise. So let me just get a little bit closer here. I don't think I've shown how to do this this, this close before. All right, so I think it's caught it and and you want to make sure that that uh, trying to get the spring on the outside of this barrel so I can drive it drive it through. Hang on a second. There we go. So that's on the outside of the barrel, and then I can wind this up. I'm waiting for it to catch. I think I had it caught before, and then I let it go. Yeah. I'm catching my fingernail on the vise here, so let me try again here. So it's on the top. 
and I want to put my spring in there like this and then catch it. So I'm pulling down on it a bit to catch it and I'm there we go. So that's now spinning in. So that's going to reel itself into the barrel. Now when it gets to the end, I don't want the uh, T-bar to go inside of the barrel. So I want to bring it in as close as I can and loosen it up just a bit because it's going to want to drive itself into the barrel and just push it just a bit. So I want that T-bar to be close but not inside the barrel. Not inside the winding barrel anyway. So there we go. So that's like that. Now if that's right, I should be able to grab my my barrel here and line up the little tiny hole for the T-bar. So that's that's the hole. See if I can zoom in here. Is this going to zoom for me? Yeah. See the hole on the top? That's the hole. So I want to line that hole up with the end of the T-bar here. So I would normally be on the other side of this, but for you folks today, I'm going to stay on this side and try to do it this way. I may have to wind that in a little further. Let me just wind that in just a bit more. You don't want to overwind it though, because then you got another problem. Oop, 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 oop. So this is now trying to spin off the barrel, so I have to tighten this up here. It loosened for some reason. I think the tightening, there's a little knurl on the bottom and the tightening knurl is on that side. So let me see if I can push this a bit. I'm going to get my head in there and hopefully there's no big flash of light here. But... All right. Yeah, okay, I heard it tick. So it's it's in the hole here. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Oh my god. Oh my god. There. Is that zoomy enough? There. Yeah, I can I think I can see it in the hole. I normally turn my head around and look the other way. I think I'll look so I'll get the cameras out of the way. Alright, so it is in the hole, so that's that's set up now. So now I remove this by it wound clockwise. So if I go counterclockwise it's going to pull the little peg out so there's a little tiny peg right there and that just pulls it out of the spring if you do it counterclockwise now I want to take my thumb on the inside here and I'm going to be pushing the spring into the barrel so this is the tricky part and if you're lucky it pushes it in nicely so there it is there in the barrel now I got to check to, to make sure that, that that hole stayed where it's supposed to be and it did so I can see I can see there's a little tiny bit of metal showing. Can you see that? There it is there. A little tiny bit of metal showing. So that's incorrectly, which is nice. And I'm going to now set myself up for oiling it and putting the cap in. There while I'm here chatting away, so make sure you put your tools back. And I've got a little tool carriage I made of, you know, it's an old CD carriage, I think, or something. And I drilled a bunch of holes in it. And so I can put all my, my main items here that you, and you can purchase most of this stuff pretty cheap off of eBay, it's not that expensive. Your screwdrivers are not that expensive. They're like a 120 bucks and some basic stuff you can just purchase. It's about, you know, it's not that expensive. Unless you're getting into the super detailed watch work, uh, the basic cleaning stuff is not that bad. And you can do a full cleaning with uh, lighter fluid like I did for years. So, so that's not new to me. So, uh, so now I've got this set up like this and I'm going to oil put some oil on the top of that barrel again right so I just grab the oil here and I just want to put a little bit of the Mobius stuff I talked to you I can remember 9010 I can never remember the other stuff so so I just put four of them here like this one two three four and these are old vintage watch springs here so it's not a bad idea to oil them like that so and that'll just get into the spring and make sure the spring doesn't stick together um, and then I think I already did, yeah, I did the bottom. I oiled that. I'm going to put just a bit of oil on the lid as well, because that's going to be in connection with the arbor. It's already 4.10. i got to finish this before my wife calls me for dinner. So, so that's that. Uh, just put a little bit on here. So you don't want any oil around the edge, because you got to snap that, snap the, um, clean my oiler up. 
you have to snap the lid back on. So I'm guilty sometimes of using the same oil for different oilers, but I always clean the oiler. So I'm not guilty of that. So if you got any comments, then keep them to yourself. <laughs> so there we go. So that's the barrel. And now I want to line up this little tab here. Um, but before I snap the barrel on, I need to put the arbor in. <laughs> Good plan, mister. So the best way of figuring out how, to, how the arbor goes is, is the direction of the hook. So, so this one here, you've got the hook hooking the spring um, from this side and this side, which means the arbor should go in this way. So, but the, then the direction of the barrel has to be capped down. So is that correct? So I have to check that to make sure. The other thing is it'll only fit into the into this one way, right? So so the smaller one the smaller one Oh my god, are they the exact same size? <laughs> Darn those Illinois people. They're Illinoising. Um, let me think. So there's the key wound, there's the the actual winding device for this, right? Which I should actually file down after. I'll do that after, but it's pretty smooth right now. So this this is pretty smooth right now, so I'm gonna have to file this to to make it usable. That's why it was slipping. That's why the guy said the key doesn't work that well. Well it's not the key, it's the arbor, but if I flatten that arbor out a bit it's gonna catch more. So so the arbor would be on the top part, right? Because you want to be able to wind the watch. And this square part would be going through here, right? So, so that's how that would go. Now, the question, the question still is, which way is this thing hooking? Is the barrel side up or down? That is my question. I think, yeah, based on the hook, the barrel side is like that. So based on the hook. The hook alone. So I put it in like this. So I'm just moving things around here so you can see what I'm up to. So you put the arbor in like that. I believe it's all in the right direction. So I'm just taking my chances here, I think. Sometimes these barrels go upside down. So it's in like that. And then take my tweezers and grab it on the bottom. Like this. At the square part. And then I want to just rotate that ever so slightly to see that it's hooked. And it is hooked. So that's hooked nicely. And now I've got that hooked. I'm going to take this barrel. And I'm not sure whether you guys are seeing this or not. But I'm going to take this barrel nice and carefully. And I'm going to take the little tiny hook on the side and line that T up here. And I gotta make sure that there's enough room to do this. So sometimes the spring will pop up a bit and you end up having to force it down a bit. So I think this is good. This one's good. Uh, let me see. Yeah, there we go. So that's that's in place like that. And I should be able to just squeeze this barrel on. With any luck. Sometimes it's just luck, folks. Now you take your tweezers, you put them on the end, and apply pressure. There we go. You hear it snap. That's the barrel snapping into place. The barrel cap or lid or whatever snapping into place. So I got to make sure that that's completely snapped into place all around. I have tapped these down before with, uh, with a staking tool, with a staking set, just to make sure it's flat. So you look around the edges of this, and if it's high on any side, it's not going to roll nicely in the barrel. So that looks pretty good there. So I've got the, the tab on this side is good, and the tab on the other side is good. So that'll fit right in there nicely. Um, I'm going to put that in right now, as a matter of fact. Let's just do that. Uh, I usually look again at the square part of this part and line it up with the square part of the barrel. So I got my—I know I got my fingers on here, but it shouldn't matter much. 
I think I said, and like I told you guys in the old days, um, I've seen videos of guys doing watchmaking, and they didn't wear gloves at all. So, so anybody who's picking on me can stop. So, so I just line up this, the flat part on one side with the flat part on the other side on the on the ratchet on the bottom, and then I should be able to just throw that in, and then move it around just a bit to get that in place. So, so if I can, if with any luck, this will fall in place. And I can tell whether it's in place by looking through the bottom, right? I don't know if it's in place right now, but I can look through the bottom of this and be able to tell whether I actually succeeded or not. And see, I looked down there, and I didn't succeed yet, so that's not in place yet. Now, you could normally you take a winding arbor on a, a younger watch, and you just turn it, and everything works, right? But on this watch, that ain't going to happen. So... So, because I got to wind it from the top, and if I think if I wind it and turn it, it might find home. So let's try that out. I'll put that back in here. My Myers number 58 movement holder. This is going to be a long video. I apologize ahead of time. And I'm going to take the winding key here, which is kind of a, it's not a bad key, but the the barrel arbor itself needs to be needs to be filed. I just want to flatten it for now and just put that on top and turn that and hopefully I find it finds home somehow. There we go. So that just dropped down into the ratchet which is nice and then this goes on top and so I want to put a little tiny bit of oil on this. I already oiled a bit um, I'm putting the red stuff on, and I showed you what that oil was already. And I'm just putting it right on the edge here where this might be touching that the barrel arbor, right? So it runs around nice and smoothly. Um, but I want to file that in, but before I do that, I just want to make sure this is, this is working. So I'm going to throw that down like this. And... Yeah, they, the, the barrel actually, the arbor needs filing to, to be able to use the key properly. And let me just see if I can screw this in. I had two screws here, if you recall. One of them was kind of troublemaker, and the other one was fine. So I got the, uh, let's see which one is which here. Yeah, I think that's a troublemaker screw there. Uh, but it's not going to be... A troublemaker for me because I know how to fix troublemakers. So I've put that in but not super tight. I only tighten things down once I know they're working, okay? That's my claim to fame. See, this one here seems to be more difficult to put in, so I'm going to switch them to see if that was the troublemaker on the other side. Just switch these screws so you're getting the full, full video here of all this stuff. So the reason that the arbors got uh, smooth on one side is that somebody was um, trying to wind this thing and then the key was slipping but they just ignored it and just kept turning it so it might have been the great great grandfather of the owner of this watch there you go so all I'm going to do is put a couple turns on this and then I'm going to tick this on the inside to make sure that it's still working so let's see if I can put a couple turns on this nice and carefully I don't want it to slip, so you kind of have to press down so it doesn't slip because it's pretty shitty right now. So there we go. So I got a couple turns on it. Now if I go in with a toothpick and touch this, it should snap back and forth, which is a good thing. So I'm just going to touch this. There we go. It snapped. I go the other way. There, you saw that snap there. So that 
means there's power going from the mainspring to to the uh, <clears throat> to the rest of the watch, and that's without any oil on it. So so now I have to oil up. I want to oil up the uh, the top here because I'll forget if I don't. So so I want to put a little bit of oil on each one of these. the center wheel. I think I can do to put a little more oil on that on there. There we go. I got that nicely. Never sure what direction my camera needs to be in, right? So I'll just put it like this and then move my movement over so it gets into the view of the camera. There we go. So that's one little bit oiled, one little bitty. And then if you pull your oiler out fast, you get lots of oil. So I don't want to put too much in there, but Two little bitties. It might have been a little bit too much oil, but three little bitties. And then I'm going to put a lighter oil for the last two. The 9110 that I love. That's one. And then if I pull my oiler out slower, I get less oil. perfect there so so that's that there um, now I would oil also the winding mechanism here uh, let me see I don't need that type of oil I need the other type so I need to oil the winding mechanism right on the edge sometimes I go in I just touch the wrong thing again because the camera's in the way That's good. So, that's that. So right now it's 4.23 and I think I will close her down, make the movie, and at this point in time I know I've got this thing put together properly. And I think what I want to do is then tomorrow, I just don't want to do anything while I'm tired. so. So tomorrow I think I'll take, uh, I'll, I'll do the rest tomorrow, which allows me to actually do the case as well. So case it and everything else, quesadilla. So I just clean the movement up a bit. I usually, I like to clean it up just a bit on top with Rodico because the cleaning stuff does work perfectly, right? But when you do this, it tends to just take a little bit of the, the, the age out of it, right? So just do that just a bit so that was a pretty comprehensive little video and uh, I actually added a lot of information on how to put that mainspring back on so uh, so you can share this with your friends um, that's a pretty good explanation of one of these very old late 1800 pocket watches this one is in actually pretty good condition I didn't have to rejewel anything which is nice uh, I'm just cleaning up the top the Rodico the Rodico, it's like the diabetes. Rodico just is so great at cleaning this material. You just rub it along the edge like this and it just gets rid of that age. And even cleaning it with uh, the very expensive cleaning machine and cleaning material I had is not gonna clean it up. So I gotta remember not that these, these aren't tight yet. Well, I think these ones are actually. So I tighten these down. I believe, I believe. Yeah, I tighten these down already. A little tighter on that one. And this one here, I think I'm, I'll do this tomorrow, but I think I'm going to file this so that it is square again. Um, that's why it's not working in this key. I think the key is square on the end, as you can see. But it's, it's having a problem with uh, getting, getting in there. So I'll leave this like this. And uh, thanks for watching this this video it's really long but uh, we're in good shape right now so all I need to do is is get that bounce uh, bounce spring clean and the bounce back in place and uh, 
and we're good to go. So thanks for watching my videos, and I will see you later. And just because I'm a good boy, I'm going to leave this in a movement holder overnight. i got tons of these movement holders, by the way. So you go to, on AliExpress, and you buy them all. So, well, I got the movement holder, actually, on eBay, the Myers uh, number 58 movement holder. I got the this parts bin here I got on uh, eBay. So, or I got it from AliExpress, I think. So I just put all the parts in there, including the key and everything else. So you, when you start your work tomorrow, you don't go, where is all my stuff? Plus, it keeps the dust off of everything because I've oiled it. I don't want to have to re-oil it. It's been dusted and I, or oiled nicely and stuff. And I, like I said before, I did some work on this case. It look, it's looking pretty good. I can see a little bit of scuff marks from the uh, polishing. I need to go down and polish this a little bit more to get rid of those. So, Oh, they're gone. I moved them with my thumb. <laughs> so, thumbprints. Maybe I don't need to do anything with this now. But I got rid of all the scratches. So, You can see side brushes on it. But I need to, I need to buff it. Is what I need to do. Anyway, thanks a lot. See you later.